scary up here. <laughs> Uh, next up, our uh, second valedictorian uh, for the class of 2021 um, is Shelby Baker. Shelby is the daughter of Brian and Shelly Baker. That feels very surreal to read that, but uh, bear with me for a minute. Uh, Shelby has been uh, very active in her school career, a uh, member of the FFA for two years, archery for two years, a uh, member of FCCLA since the eighth grade for five years, National Honor Society for two, Member of the biology club, fast and slow pitch softball, and played varsity basketball for four years. She ran track, cheered, and is a member of the gifted and talented club, class president, and on the high school leadership team for all four years of high school. Shelby's received awards these past few years. Uh, her junior year, she won the REC essay scholarship, winning a trip to Washington, D.C. She received um, half of the Cherokee valedictorian scholarship, she received several academic scholarships from NEO, NSU, and PSU. Member of the superintendent's honor roll every year. Member of the all-state academic fast and slow pitch softball team. Lucky Seven Conference all-star basketball participant, sophomore and her senior year. Member of the Oklahoma Indian Honor Society and also a member of the NEO chapter of the Honor Society Phi Theta Kappa. Shelby's extracurricular activities outside of school include being an employee of the Cherokee Nation Summer Youth Program. She's concurrently enrolled in NEO a and and is an active member of Mound Valley Baptist Church. Shelby's future plans are to finish her associate's degree from NEO and then transfer to either PSU or NSU to work on her bachelor's degree and become an educator. Her favorite quote is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. It's my pleasure this afternoon to present to you my daughter, whom her father and I, of course, are very proud, Shelby Baker. Anti-fragile, a term coined by Nassim Taleb to describe a category of things or people that not only are able to handle chaos and tough times, but need it to survive and flourish. COVID, tough losses, hard schoolwork, and certain lessons we are taught make us anti-fragile. Anti-fragility means more than robust or tough. It doesn't mean unbreakable, but it will become better after being broken. The pandemic has made us anti-fragile. The uncertainty we were all faced with this past year made what we are able to do and have that much sweeter. When in the past we would dread coming to school, this year we were grateful to even be able to show up to spend time with our friends, teachers, and administrators. Competitions make us anti-fragile as well. Whether it's star events in FCCLA, competitions in FFA, or sports games. Losing might set us back a notch or two, but it makes us hungry to be on top. It makes us practice longer and harder, therefore making us better than we ever would have been if we had won. With tough schoolwork comes anti-fragility. I had a couple NEO classes this year that were hard, but that made May 5th, the day I finished them all, that much sweeter. Life lessons are often tough, but they are absolutely necessary to make us the strong, knowledgeable people that we are today. We lose sometimes. People come and go from our lives, and things do not always go as planned. If you know me, you know I love order. I plan everything, and I like to stick to schedule. I struggle not knowing sometimes, but I know that God's plans are so much greater than my small ideas. God has great plans for all of our lives, even when things don't go how we imagined. He did not create us to watch us fail. He created us to become anti-fragile and do great things. He lets us face these seemingly impossible battles because he knows we can handle them if we lean on him. The story of the Bible of Job illustrates this well. Job was a wealthy man who loved God. Satan claimed that Job lived a righteous life because he was so blessed, having everything he could ever want to need. But God knew that Job had true love for him. So God allowed Satan to take everything from Job except his life to see that his love for God was more than his material wealth. Job lost so much, but remained faithful to God. Because he continued to pray to the Lord, 
Even during the hard times, God granted him twice as much land and animals as he had started with. He gave him more children and a healthier life. Job thrived after being faced with such turmoil. Job was anti-fragile. Now I'm sure most of us haven't been given the battles quite like Job, but this true story should show us that nothing is too big for God and that he always prevails. Not even the devil can make us stray from God if we don't let him. God's plans are always best. We can wonder, but we shouldn't question God. When I think of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, I can't help but wonder why the Son of God, the only perfect man to walk the earth, had to suffer how he did for sinners like us. Although it was awful what was done to him, he did it for us. And because of it, every person that A, admits they're a sinner, B, believes that Jesus is the Son of God, and C, confesses their faith in Jesus Christ, has a home waiting for them in heaven. Our class motto describes this plan for us perfectly. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I am so thankful for the life God has given me. I'm glad for the good times and the hard times because they've made me better. I'm thankful for everyone that's helped me get to where I am today. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for raising me in church while explaining how important it is that I have my own personal relationship with God. Thank you, Dad, for giving me my love for sports and the outdoors and the toughness I had to keep up with you and the boys. Thank you, Mom, for making me a younger, redheaded version of yourself. I have your love for learning, and I think I possess some of your boss lady skills already. Thank you both for loving me beyond measure. Thank you to my grandpa and late grandma McPaul for showing me how to live a strong Christian life. My mom was the closest thing to a Proverbs 31 woman I've ever seen. I am forever grateful that I was able to attend Meemaw School from birth to four years old until I could start preschool here at Blue Jacket. And I am thankful for my peepaw who has given me wisdom and taught me many lessons. I also want to thank my grandma and late grandpa Baker. Although my papa has been gone for almost 10 years now, to this day I still look back on the fond memories I have of him. And thank you Mimi for always being there for me no matter what I needed. Every teacher and principal I've ever had here at Blue Jacket has played a part in molding me into who I am today and who I will become. I'm going to school to become a teacher because of all of you. My mom and grandparents were all born to be teachers, and I know I was too. Thank you to my classmates for giving me a great 14 years at Blue Jacket Public School. We've been through so much together, and I'm very blessed to know you all. To the Blue Jacket graduating class of 2021, remain anti-fragile. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Live by these words, class. God's got this, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Congrats, guys. You will do great things. I love all of you. 